Welcome to the New York Transit Museum. Here they have all the different artifacts of New York City's subway and bus history throughout the decades. The subway system officially opened in 1904, but there has been public transportation even before then. Here we have the different turnstiles all the way to the modern day. This one was notorious for having people get stuck inside. We have the old token system right over here. <laughs> I love that sound. And we see that tokens were used all the way until about the early 2000s, which we still see tokens right over here. And these machines, I remember using these machines. And here we have the modern one, which soon will become outdated. So here we have all the different tokens. We have the five borough token, the quarter size token, the double diamond jubilee token, all the way to the RRT tokens, 1928. And here we have the token booth. So these were where tokens were dispensed. I love coming into this museum. There's so many cool stuff to see, especially being a subway rider most of my life. It just feels like a blast into the past. But wait, there's a cool section right below our feet, which is still a working subway station, just not part of the public station, uh, transportation system where people come in and out. But there's a host of different old classic trains. So let's go on the tour to show you all the wonderful, beautiful history of the subway system. So here we have the subway system throughout the decades, the 1960s, and how they were rebuilding after there was a huge dip in ridership by the late 60s. In the 1970s, when they were clearing up the graffiti on a daily basis, spending more than $500,000 a year to clear up all the graffiti. It was an initiative that hasn't ever really been attempted before because the city was littered in graffiti at that time. And graffiti artists kind of gave up after a while since they're work was continually to be erased. Here we have the seven train passing through Queens. The 100% graffiti clean initiative, 1989. <laughs> Here's how subway cars are retired. They're actually thrown into the seabed so they can become reefs for oceanic life off the coast of New York. Here we have the train of many colors. Look at that, all the different colors on the seven line. And let's go through here. Never mind, there's music playing. So let's go through here. So there's still bathrooms here in this original subway station. And here we have all the poetry in motion 
that appears on the subway cars that has been a staple of your subway ride for the past 25 years. And this is a very interesting little place right here. This is the pumping station to, because the sewers are technically above us here in the station. So everything that is from the bathroom has to be pumped upwards. So this is the pumper, the ejector room. Just imagine that. All subway stations used to have bathrooms, but uh, they don't anymore. The majority of them, unless for employees. Here we have the bus control center used in manual type like this guy over here. Look at that. Oh, that's really cool. The bus system is also very extensive. It's not just the subway. Even though the subway was built in 1904, there was forms of public transportation predating that, namely the streetcars and the trolleys. And here we have all the different rapid transit of Brooklyn that continued to be in use even when the subway uh, was constructed. And here we also have uh, rapid transit cars and rail cars as well. Old subway maps, here we have the Manhattan bus routes. And this I really love. The old school buses from the 1950s. This is the Q5A that went on Merrick. And this, they call it the fishbowl bus because it had this curvy fishbowl appearance. This type of bus was also um, similar to the ones featured in the Bronx Tale and many other films. And here we have a depiction of the trolley cars or the the trolleys, yeah, in this case. Fun fact, the Brooklyn Dodgers, or now, nowadays they're the Los Angeles Dodgers, they get their name because they were the Brooklyn Trolley Dodgers. They were dodging trains. They were, I mean, they were dodging trolleys. Here we have more of the modern buses. Lots of kid-friendly exhibitions over here. <laughs> A miniature version of the trolleys. And here we have another. Let's go inside the bus. You can even see the driver's seat right over here. Wow. Here we have the entire timeline of the trolleys and the streetcars. And then the subway system and the bus systems as well. So very extensive history. It's this rapid transit which helped New York City grow. Different badges of the transit workers. There used to be different bus companies, then they all united eventually under the Metro, Metropolitan Transit Authority, MTA for short.
the badges of the conductors are over here. Let's zoom in. Oh, that's cool. And now let's go to the coldest part of this exhibition, which is right downstairs. So we're backtracking. Here's the cut and cover method. So in the subway, the city, the, the streets were dynamited during the nighttime and during the daytime, the men would dig a hole and then build these stations. So they basically were disconnected cellars united by tunnels. And that's how they built the first subway lines through the cut and cover method. Nowadays, we have deep boring technology, so we bore tunnels deep into the bedrock. And here we see the cut and cover technique being done on a very busy street. This is 7th Avenue, 42nd Street. There's a really cool photo. Cut and cover right over here. They're still maintaining some type of uh, streetcar service right over here. And now let's go down below. This is the coolest part of the entire museum, in my opinion, is the actual platform for still working station because these are live tracks. There's even a huge sign that says danger, live tracks. Don't go on the third rail over here. Here's a collection of old, older trains. And we're gonna go down here. And this is how the elevateds used to look like. The elevateds ran all the way into the 1960s until they were all fully decommissioned and destroyed many of the overline lines. Now, you can't only see these trains from the outside, we can also go in. So stay tuned, but first let's go all the way back. So here we can see that this is actually still a working train station. Those are gates that open up and this train line used to be the HH, which was decommissioned by 1936, ran all the way to Hoyt Skimmerhorn stop. Still does today uh, in order to transfer these trains in and out. Sometimes uh, the transit museum, runs these trains on specific lines so people can go back and forth but a lot of people miss this back area over here which is the switching room and here we have the signaling system and where to switch on and off the third rail, which is electrified. So it says the signal is red over red, meaning stop and stay, look over across the tracks. Behind the far rails, a hammerhead shaped stick raised from the ground, 45 degree angle, the automatic stop arm. Whenever a signal's red, an automatic stop arm is raised. If a train does not stop for the signal, the automatic stop will trigger its brakes. Ah, so there is a fail-safe 
if the conductor decides to not stop. So right here we see a little bit better the gate. The third rail, which is electrified, you can get seriously injured or worse. If you touch that third rail, don't touch it. And here we have the signaling system and then they have the fourth brakes right over here. So let's walk through and let's get into the actual train cars. So this is, this was part of the elevated, the 1407 built in 1907 for the BRT. And let's go through here. Wow. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, wow. Let's sit down. Ooh, cool. This is rattan right over here. Uh, this would actually snap very easily and they always had to constantly repair them. And a lot of the women complained be, uh, because it would rip apart their stockings whenever they would be sitting down here in the subway, uh, which I can imagine would be very embarrassing back in the day to have a bunch of ripped stockings. But these are comfy actually. These are nice. Good cushioning. I like it. So right over here, we have old advertisements that denote the era. This is a really old kind of As you can see, this one was built in 1904. So this type of subway was the original ones used when the subway was open. So if you were to ride from Times Square all the way up to Harlem, which was one of the original lines, you'll be riding in the subway just like this one. We can see the transfer here from car to car. And we have the bell. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> BRT logo. And maybe one of the conductors was here. Oh, Heinz spaghetti. Look at that. Some fine Heinz spaghetti. So this one's very special. This is the IND R4, 1932 to 1933. And this one was featured In the great film, seeing a lot of women of Cuban or Puerto Rican origin singing and dancing through here, dressed in 1940s, 1950s type of clothing, it was featured in the film In the Heights. And this was one of the very first A trains to actually ride all the way fully uptown. Uh, so Duke Ellington probably rode one of these and talked about riding the A train all the way up to Harlem. So I love how so how cool this this uh, train car looks. I love the warm lighting. This extra extra cool effect over here. So 
So right here, these used to have a very bad reputation for being hair cutters <laughs> because it would be way too close to someone standing over here. So just in case of the train jolts, you do not want to be in the wrong place. All right, let's go forward in time. So here we have the IND R7A, 1938, and they're rebuilt in 1947. Oh, look at the color scheme on this one. Here we have a... Oh, wow, a old Guinness advertisement and they were advertising half beer half stout that's so weird because it, irish people really don't hear about this too often uh this is a very american thing i thought this was pretty modern but no it seems to be classic here we have a advertisement for the motion picture the glass menagerie which was a motion picture version of the tennessee williams play of course <laughs> something about cigarettes and look at these. All right, let's 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 test these. Let's see if these are comfortable. Whoa. I kind of like it. Also, also rattan and um, it is comfy. The back is a bit too straight. So it feels a bit weird, but I like the rattan and they have springs in these seats, which I assume could go dead very easily and be very uncomfortable. But it's kind of nice, very spacious subway car. It says, obey the law, do not smoke, spitting or throwing. Offenders will be prosecuted. Here's the BMT subway map. <laughs> Lots of little kids. Good morning. So here we have another one. And here they finally covered up the fans. So it will be a safety hazard. And here we have a little bit more modern advertisements. Now we're going to the 1970s and 1980s. But before we go a little bit further into time, Let's check out this one. Oh, I like this one. I like the colors. It's the colors of the Mets. 1908. This is the BMT Q car. 1612C type. This one's a lot taller from the platform over here. And I like that this one has a little private seat over here, similar to the railroad systems in New York, like the Long Island Railroad. You can have your little private little booth over here. Smooch. <laughs> these are nice seats. I wish they would bring back these rattan seats. We got the strap hangers here. They put more of a modern one. But they have these fans. Look at these fans. So, of course, since some of these would go underground, you would need some type of ventilation. And they would put on these fans. And here, oh, a little more intimate seating. So these ones, to me, are really interesting. This one, to me, looks like a submarine, like going underwater. I love this. This is the R11 prototype R34 car, 1949. 
I love the look of this one. This one's cool. 1940s advertisements. Wow, so cool. And here we have the subway map. This is when the subway maps tried to be a little bit more easier to, to read, so they went very minimalistic. And this was the World's Fair car. This was the car that rode on the modern day 7 line all the way to the World's Fair from Times Square directly to modern day Metz Willits Point stop. So here we have a World's Fair poster. Here we have the RRT R12 car, 1948. A little bit more basic, a little bit more straight seating. The RRT R15 1950s train right here. Let's try these seats. R plush red seating. Let's see if these are comfy. Add the sound effects. All the screeching, the people screaming, the person snoring, the guys breakdancing. It's showtime. Just, just add all those sound effects. People with the boom boxes because it's a pretty old car. Or, actually, this probably predates boomboxes also. I like it. It's nice. Comfy seating, also springs. I, lo I love the use of springs on these seats. I can imagine they're hard to maintain, but they're really comfy when you sit on them. The back side is nice, still pretty straight. But it's a nice, nice subway car. I like it. Look at this one. 1963, the IRT R33S. And this one starts looking a lot more like our modern subway system with these metal strap hangers. <laughs> I can just imagine swinging on here. So similar style to the other ones we saw, just a little bit more straighter in this one. Oh wow, this one's spacious. This one's huge. Oh my god. Wow, where did this one ride? Look how big these seats are. The little tiny little seats there in the back. I wish they would bring back this style. And look at the dividers over here. Usually a big problem in the subway is people sitting, standing way too close to you when you're sitting down. This is the BRT standard car. 
The BRT standard represents a radical departure in subway car development. Rather than adapt the design of steel RRT cars, the BRT chose a new car design. Wow, so where did it run? All BRT and BMT lines. This one's so interesting. Let's go down here. Well, actually, before I go to this one, this one's a famous one. I'll show you two more. Right over here, we have the pump cars. These were necessary to pump water out of the subway system in case of any type of flooding. Right here, pump cars in service. Huge, huge pumps. And then over here, we had the Long Island Railroad service cars. And they would come equipped with bathrooms, a bed. Locker rooms. There's the different benches of the subway system as well. So this is the Long Island Railroad caboose, C60, 1961. and the locomotives that powered some of the much older trains predating the subway. And this is the end of the line over here. So there is no tunnels this way. And here we have a diesel locomotive from 1959. And the R44 BMT IND still in use. These, this specific one was decommissioned back in 2010, but similar style still in use here today and soon will become a relic, just like these other train cars we visited. But there's one last one that's very famous from a specific film. Right over here, the BMT IND R30 car, 8506, 1961. And this one is very famous for being the one that was featured in many films, The French Connection, and also Saturday Night Fever, and many others. Let me know what other film. There's a famous scene where John Travolta is riding the subway and he sits down here at the end of the car and kind of just jamming out sitting like this oh yeah having Bee Gees in his head and there we go the John Travolta pros right here in the classic train cars that would ride through Bensonhurst Brooklyn Used to be a very lively air. It still is, but very lively back in the day. Wow. I'm gonna go back to my favorite train car here in the entire system. I love the look of this one. Right here, New York City, everyone. Oh, ooh, wow. I'm off to who knows where. This was the New York Transit Museum. Highly recommend visiting. Right now they're open Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. It's a really fun museum. Very kid-friendly, as you can hear the kids uh, as I was walking around. Really awesome spot to visit. Uh, they open up a different day for members. Highly recommend coming here. 
Everyone keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day.